Alright guys, welcome back with another video today. Today we're going to be changing the strings and cables on my Hoyt RX4 Ultra. So this last video I shot was me putting strings and cables on my bow. After shooting it all and tuning it, uh, going through all the footage and trying to edit it down, it was just the video was it was just way too long. Uh, so this is going to be a multi-series part. I'm going to put them out in consecutive weeks. So this first one's going to be me actually putting strings and cables and doing a rough tune through paper. Uh, the second one will be me going outside, walk back tuning, maybe bare shaft tuning, broadhead tuning. And then uh, the third one will probably be me building a sight tape for my slider sight. And hopefully by then, man, it's time to go to tack. So stay tuned. We've got a lot more videos to come, a lot more stuff, great stuff to put out there. I just want to say also, too, in all the previous videos and the products that I have reviewed and a lot of the products I do have coming up, I have no affiliation with those companies. They don't send me anything. I'm not getting any discounts. I don't have any discount codes. Uh, I just, they're great products. I've done my research and I bought them and used them. Some I like, some I don't. Uh, so, you know, I'm just putting information out there for you guys and you can do with it what you want. Uh, if it sounds like something that you'd like after I shot, go buy it, man. Uh, all, all for it. So stay tuned. We've got a lot more videos to come. Like the videos, subscribe to the channel. It helps me get out in front of more people. Thanks. Uh, first thing first, I'm going to take a bunch of measurements to make sure that I can put the bow back into spec once I put the new strings and cables on it because I'm going to need to tune it after. But I'm going to start by taking the axle to axle length, which is 34 and a 16th. Uh, I would recommend writing all this stuff down so you don't have to try to remember it. Uh, and not all the bows that come off the line are going to be the exact same spec. So this will be the spec specifically for your bow. So that way if you do run into any tuning issues, you can always go back to where you were. Because I know this bow is in tune right now. So after I put these strings and cables on, I know I can always go back to these numbers as a reference. New brace height, which is great. Six and 13 sixteenths. Draw length and draw weight. Sixty nine point two. Sixty nine bow is in time. We can see that here we're just barely touching. I'll go up to the top one and it is touching as well. Draw length is coming in right at 29 and a half on the strong side. Okay, a measurement of my D loop. So that way I can replicate that. I run about a half an inch is what it says. D loop. And my peep sight from the center of my D loop. Five and 13 sixteenths peep. I'm gonna leave these, I'm gonna leave the D loop on the peep in and this set of strings is gonna turn into my backup set of strings that I can take with me on the road, just leaving my bow case. So that way if uh, I do have any problems in the field, I can just go to an archery shop and have them switch strings out for me. I don't actually have to order a whole new set and wait for them. But, so. Now the way I'm gonna go about doing this is I'm gonna replace one at a time. These are the new gas strings. These are the Ghost XVs. They are camouflage. So the way to tell the top and the bottom on these is the gas puts a P 
piece of serving material down through the center of your string that's where your peeps gonna go so that's how I know that's the top but it's usually typically the one with more string on the top above the center serving so I can keep all the twists in this string. Now we're gonna replace this bottom bus cable. This piece here you're going to have to save, the gas does not give you one for it. I'm only going to hook up one side of this because to hook up the other side I need to pull this yoke cable out. It as well snaps into the center. String silencer out. I need to take those out of the other. Get the string silencer out. Just a piece of serving material in the center so that's easy to come back to if I need to. I do want to take these roller guards out to replace these. I'm going to do them one at a time so that way I don't lose them. Just pull it out, slightly put it back in. You could shimmy it out from underneath here, but uh, I'm afraid that I will end up ruining or nicking these. I think anytime you work in your bow with something you especially have never done before, it is best practice to just go slow and pay attention to what you're doing uh, just one thing at a time at least that's that's always worked for me whether it came to building arrows or working on my bow for the first time as long as I went slow I knew I was gonna be alright same thing I'm going to loosen this Roller guard in the center, make it easier to take it off and replace it. Now that I've got all my roller guards, etc., in, it is time to put these string silencers back in. Now before I seat everything in, I want to make sure that everything is correctly in the tracks where it's supposed to be. Everything has tension on it. And I'm slowly going to start to take tension off the press. Get it all on. Where's my tape? Let's check the brace height is six and fifteen sixteenths, which is a little long. Axle to axle is thirty three and seven fifteen thirty three and fifteen sixteenths. So it's a little short. 
All right, so this is a simple overhand knot on the top. I'm going to do a simple over underhand knot on the bottom. Stack it right up against it, pull it tight. Another overhand knot on the top. Now that I have three of them, I'm gonna slide this up. All right, and I'm going to continue to stack these top and bottom. Eighteen. All right, now that I have eighteen, I'm going to continue to make the overhand knot on the top, but I'm going to lace it in between the bottom two that I have already. Cinch it in there. And then I'm going to finish that off with a square knot. Finish this off with a square knot. A good cinch. All right. Eighteen square knot. Still a little not high, so I'm going to raise the rest up just to scope. Now this is a perfect example of we do it right because we do it twice. I had my knock sets tied too high, so I was consistently getting this uh, knock high tear that I could not get out of it and I could not raise my rest high enough and it was too high for me to be comfortable because it was going through the burger hole. It was not going through the burger hole anymore, it was way too high. So now we're going to reset up and reset my knocking points. Alright. Now that I've got this all remarked remark my knocking points tie them I like to use this halo 14 thousandths I like to use a smaller material on the top and a slightly larger material on the bottom because that helps keep your knock level through your draw cycle if you go back Bomar's got a great video uh, Bomar Archery on YouTube about knock pinch and how to prevent knock pinch and how to tie your knock sets in order to prevent knock pinch and that's what I have that's the kind of school of thought that I have followed so I use the small the larger material on the top or the bottom and the smaller material on the top Now to tie the bottom, I'm going to take my knock, the one I'm going to be shooting the most, and the one I'm going to be hunting with and tuning off of are these nocturnals. These are the universal knocks. They, you can get the X-knock, which it's the same 204, but these universals, they're a lot beefier around the actual knock itself. This is some power grip 18 thousandths. This is what I'm going, this is what I use to tie my peeps in. This is what I'm going to use to tie the bottom of my knock sets.
This is the Breda Spectra 23. I cut about six, seven inches of it. It gives me enough of a tail to work with so when I make mistakes or uh, it gives me enough to cinch down because uh, honestly this is one of the, this is something every bow owner should know how to do because if you're ever in the field or at home or away from the shop or the shop's closed and your D-loop breaks, uh, you don't want to let this dollar and 50 cent piece of rope uh, cost you not being able to hunt. So use a little bit of heat, use the radiant of the heat. You don't need to put the flame onto it and just slowly melt it low and slow. Make a nice little ball. Don't catch it on fire. Some guys will catch it on fire and just slam the lighter into it. That's not what I prefer to do. I prefer to get a nice little mushroom ball on the end of that by just heating it. Tie it through. You want the ball facing you when it's in the press like this or to the left hand side of the bow. Get it on there, get it up against the knock set and give it a little cinch. I'll grab up at the top here because I'm going to end up cutting this off anyways. I don't want to grab down here because if I do and I mar up the D loop, I'm going to have to cut it off and do it again. Give it a nice little cinch. You can come back down to the other side. Tie your next knot in. You want it kind of tight to the string because if you have too much of a gap, all this is gonna do is once you put your pliers in here and stretch it, it's going to stretch out. So it's gonna look a lot tighter than it actually is, but once you stretch it out and pull it all together, it will be where you want it. So, put about probably a quarter inch high. Get this one all frayed out, nice and frayed. Again, we're just gonna use the radiant of the heat from the lighter. I'm not gonna stick the flame and engulf it. Let's get a nice little ball on the end of that. Let it cool off. When you burn it and char it and make it black, all it does is it makes the string weaker, it makes the rope weaker. So now that I got it in, we can pull it, pull it tight. Stick my pliers in here. Work this a few times. Get everything real cinched. Now we're pull this back out of the press and set our paper back up and shoot some more arrows through paper and see if we can't get this thing tuned and get it outside and work on a sight tape for it. All right, this is round two of trying to tune this bow. We got our knock sets back in the correct position. I got center shot set back to 13 16s. Everything's back to baseline zero. So this will give me a good starting point again to go off of. All right, shoot it a few times. This thing's got a tick, a tick knock left tear. So we're gonna go ahead and put a few twists in the yoke and try to get that out of it. All right. So I have a knock left tear. So I'm going to put one twist into the left and take one twist out of the right. Whatever you go in, you want to take the equal amount of twists out of the other side and that will keep your cable lengths the same, which will keep you in tune. If you only do one side or the other, you could run into some other major tuning issues. Seem to solve it. Let's do another one to confirm.
So, after first one was a bullet hole, probably a little grip, then I kept having this tick, knock left tear. I did one twist into the left yoke and one out of the right yoke. This was my first shot with that adjustment, and this is my second shot. Both of those I call bullet holes. And now that I got that all set up, and now that I believe this bow is shooting in tune, we're gonna walk outside and shoot a bunch of arrows through it, kind of get everything settled back in, get my peep settled, and then once that's settled, we'll take it back from 20 to 40 and walk back to it and make sure everything's hitting in a straight line. So like I said in my intro, this is the end of this video of the strings and cables. Next week I'm going to have a video of me actually tuning this bow, walk back tuning it, possibly bear shaft tuning it, and broadhead tuning it. So stay tuned for next week's video where I actually go through how I'm going to tune this uh, through paper, bullet holes. So hopefully this next week's video is going to be super short and sweet.